Welcome to the Organization of Maneuverability Radio Show, Defying Gravity, so your team can soar to altitude, with host Marshall Goldsmith, Executive Coach, Randy Swain. Well, hello. Once again, this is uh, Marshall Goldsmith, uh, Certified Executive Coach, Randy Swain, and uh, the founder of Coaching for Relevance, and uh, uh, starting with uh, my radio show for this episode that uh, is an organizational maneuverability radio show, which talks about uh, leading in challenging and perhaps unpredictable environments. And once again, for our third uh, episode uh, uh, today, I'm very honored to have uh, uh, Steve Wood uh, on uh, the show today. Uh, as I mentioned in a couple of the previous episodes, he's a fellow uh, neuroplastician, a, a, a fellow uh, neuroscience uh, 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 expert, so to speak, and uh, and uh, and that's kind of what we're bringing on this on this uh, on this series. So I'm very honored to have him on. And Steve, uh, welcome. And uh, take a minute and just sort of introduce yourself if you would uh, do that. Hey, Randy. How you going? Good to uh, good catch up again. Good deal. Good deal. Um, well, you know. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll probably just keep on repeating the same thing. I, you know, I'm Steve. I'm uh, <laughs> down, in, down in Sydney, Australia, and um, I've had you know a, a career sort of over a number of years. Uh, I started up you know in engineering, and then uh, I spent most of my time in TV, and then uh, eventually became a TV executive producer, mainly in the area of sport. Wow, and it was. It was uh, through that experience that I was able to meet, well, over the years, you know, pl- plenty of uh, elite athletes and um, TV presenters, hosts, and uh, it struck me that some of the ones that were uh, outstanding had all the skills of the top-level professionals for some reason just didn't quite make it. So I met a whole range of people that seemed to have the same ability, and when you think about it, Randy, it's the same with um, uh, you know a sport in Amer- America. Everybody that gets into uh, an elite level of sport all have very, very similar skills. It doesn't matter whether you're driving a you know a NASCAR or you're an NFL. You know, to get to that level, you've got to be a, a, a high standard. But then the question is why, and this is the question I ask myself was why is it some uh, stand out and the others just seem to be um, just getting by at that level? And after, you know, lots of chats and interviews with these guys, uh, I discovered it was it was all the way they thought, you know, what they believed yeah. In, yeah. in themselves. So that's that's really the thing that's led me down this uh this path and I just find it absolutely fascinating and uh, I love digging deep into it. And you know, that's very aligned with uh, what I think the, the, the basic comment and the basic insight that you want to bring uh, today is, is very aligned because yeah, you know, it's when you got to look at what is it that separates you from the top. And one of the things that I learned in my college and ROTC and, and all that uh, uh, journey as I, grew to uh, what I've accomplished and everything, what I realized that, and what I used to tell people is simply this, that the higher you go, the harder the competition is. And what's it going to take for you to excel, you know, kind of thing. And it's it, it's sort of aligned with a little bit about what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, you know, I'm going to try and touch on that particular point that you just made, you know, in today's chat. But um, if you're ready to get going, I, I think over the last couple of episodes we've spoken about the uh, subconscious and the conscious minds. Mm-hmm. The last time we got together, we spoke about um, autopilot and how mm-hmm. we need this routine of thinking and behaving. And today's topic sort of dovetails with that, and they call it the terror barrier. Now, lots of yeah. people, that, lots of people haven't heard about the terror barrier, but yes. Yeah. It's just a term that's given to this imaginary boundary that we set ourselves that describes the hurdle or the resistance that we encounter when we're attempting 
to go beyond our comfort zones. So, and and it's interesting that you say that because just an aligned point of that, one of the things that I've seen so often in my journey is people when they get to the point that you're talking about right here, they have a tendency to just making excuses rather than really accomplishing and stuff. And so it's kind of interesting with that they just make excuses about. Uh, why maybe something's not working or something. So it's just something that I've seen a lot in, and, in my journey. And, and you know what? I think you make a really interesting point for and one of the things that I, I was going to say at the beginning is that cool. it, it's it's people just people listening to this, they don't need to get overwhelmed with the term neuroscience. Like it's not to do with, you know, taking the top off your head and seeing what's inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. It, it's 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 just very simply understanding what we're doing on a daily basis, how we're behave, behaving, how we're being triggered. You know, are we reaching our goals? Um, are we sort of you know down in the dumps and you know don't know what to do? But mm -hmm. this um, this the, this idea that. When we get to the, the 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 boundary or the limits of what we're used to, like when we're contained within this comfort zone, and quite often these little triggers, it could be, you know, at work, um, the, the boss says, you know, we need you to step up. We know you're a great technician, but we now want you to become a manager or a leader. Um, we feel like you need to, you know, technology is advancing so fast. We need you to go back and study so you can improve your skills. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happens. The, the, the point that, that you are making is people start the internal chatter. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I don't think I'm good enough. You know, do I'm past the study thing? You know, I find it hard to learn. I don't think I really want to, you know, I don't want to be a good man. All these excuses that coming up and the, the reality is that you, you you can be anything you want to be now people you know uh, shrug their shoulders when they hear that but my viewpoint is that all it is is just training the brain making connections in the brain and you can experiment with that just by mm -hmm. starting on a monday and going you know i'm going to learn something today or i'm going to you know fine-tune a skill by the end of the week you can learn an amazing lot or you can train your brain very quickly in three or four or five days. But getting back to the the terror barrier, yeah, uh, is that it, it we all have this feeling, it represents the fear and the anxiety and the uncertainty that arises when we approach this threshold of mm -hmm. the unknown. It's really about the unknown and it's it's trying to step outside of that familiar territory. And if you think about it, like we've just got a, 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 everything that you've done, it could be, you know, relationships, it could be career, it could be finances, it, it doesn't really matter, but you've got, a, you've got a map, you've got a wide map inside your mind, brain, mm -hmm. about um, what you think you're, you're capable of. Um, and if you think about it, if you want an analogy for this, it's like imagine a sporting field and that sporting field represents everything that you used to do. It, it, it represents your familiar world. Mm -hmm. And you're happy playing in that every day of the week. But then you get pushed to the, the, the outer boundaries of it and you've got to, open the gate or the fence that's on that boundary line that's, in, that, that's you know, uh, encompassing that field and you're asked to step outside of it and go somewhere else, you know, go to the field down the road, go to the, yeah. go and play somewhere else. And you go, yeah. no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm safe here. Um, and you and know, it's, it's in, and it's interesting with what you're saying there. I mean, I, I think I've shared this one time before, but, uh, I've had a lot of people ask me one of these days when I'm going to retire, and my answer is always the same when I take my last breath because I look at them and I say, because I'm just like somebody, like you said, an athlete who's in a race or something. When do you stop when you're beyond the finish line, you know, kind of thing? And and as I tell them, I'm going to run through the tape 
you know, and it's kind of like what you're talking about there. Uh, but, but a lot of people don't realize that and don't aren't even aware of that. Look, we could we could take a we could we could take a a, a side path here for uh, a a little while, but the uh, you make a really good point, and mm -hmm. I, I, I feel exactly the same. And some of the research says that people can be um, totally healthy. Um, but as they get to, uh, is, is the retirement age, is there an official retirement age in the, in the States? Is it 65 or something? Uh, I think it totally varies. <laughs> it depends on yeah. the industry for sure. So, you know, in, I think in Europe and you know, particularly in Australia, you know, 65 is the big year that, you know, everybody looks forward to, to retiring. Mm -hmm. And um, people can be healthy up to and just before that point. But as soon as they start relating that age to retirement and then looking around at what it, it you know, what retirement looks like, they start using the language of, oh, well, you know, um, it, it's, it, you know, when you get to that age, it's the time when you've got to have a hip replacement or a knee replacement. It's yeah. when you stop or, you know, when you go traveling. But um, the, 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 the most important thing is that you, you well, you, You've got to have a great diet. You, you you've got to have uh, you, you've got to continue to learn because that's the thing that um, you know keeps the brain active. Exercise mm -hmm. is the thing that keeps the blood not only flowing through your body but it stimulates the brain as yep. well. So um, that's just a, that's a, a little bit of a side note. But getting back to your point that you made earlier, Andy, was this. Um, this problem of when most people um, get, you know, experience the, the terror barrier, mm -hmm. they end up with two choices. They either go back to safety, back, back to the familiar, or they push through the fear and um, remain in the pursuit of that, mm -hmm. that goal. And so I would say that anybody that, that, that is experienced this if you can just settle for a while because there's actually a, an opening here for you to e achieve extraordinary things because the the field gets diluted a little bit because most people will turn away when they hit the, they hit the terror barrier yeah it, there's only a few left standing so <laughs> yeah. if you've got the courage uh, just to push through the fear, and quite often the fear just drops away. Um, you can make extraordinary. You can make extraordinary um, progress. Um, you, you know, if I could just kind of interject and share one yeah. thing with that, because you're right. You're totally right. And yeah. um, but one of my uh, my the, my newest blogs, and also one of the next uh, TVNN uh, radio shows that I'm going to be on. I'm going to be talking about the the truthful picture of perseverance, and and it's not just about controlling everything around you. It's being and this is kind of what you're hinting at there. It's staying engaged and walking forward and breaking through that terror bar barrier and stuff. But that doesn't just come through your control freak stuff. Yeah, and and look, I, I keep on using this as my you know from my own experience. I don't really like. You know, I study a lot, but I always like to try and make it relevant to my own experience because if you've yeah. experienced it yourself, you know really what it's like. And so the other key thing, if people are listening to this and taking notes, is that if if you find that you're yourself in this terror barrier, then just stop for a moment because you'll notice that it's not this one particular thing. It, it will be something that reoccurs in your life, maybe mm -hmm. in a different form. And whatever that obstacle is, whatever that fear is, will start manifesting itself 
in your life. It's yeah. It, it's a well known fact that whatever you, you, you whatever your level of consciousness is, whatever you're aware of, then just manifests itself in your life. So if you don't think that you are capable or deserve of er, er, earning more than what you're earning now, then you won't. Even if someone, your boss comes to you and says, you've done an outstanding job, here's another $50,000 a year, mm-hmm. you'll sabotage yourself and you'll, you know, make a bad investment or you'll waste the money or you'll get rid of that money so that you come back to the level that you're comfortable with. And it happens with a whole range of different things. But So my point is, just for a moment before you say, no, I'm not going to do this, there's an opportunity to probably break a long-term pattern. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Because it's not just about, you know, going off and studying or... Um, That's right. ...getting a different qualification. It, it's a, it, it's a connected fear mm-hmm. that will play out in other areas of your life. Yeah. And, and let me ask you a question, just... When you have, when you got somebody maybe that you know that's that's being restricted or or imprisoned or hemmed in, if you will, by that terror boundary, uh, what are some uh, some um, uh, evidences that they should be aware of, where when they sense that happening to them? Because you know what, and you're kind of implying this totally right, because every one of us could run into that as a holding us back. So how would you kind of recommend to somebody that they would probably uh, have a sense of how they know in their mind or in their what they're doing and their experience of when uh, when that terror boundary is holding them back? Look, I, I think I think the one key thing that I've discovered over the years that I think has been most valuable for me is this um, – inner talking, what we say to ourselves. From the time we wake up in the morning, there's chat going on in our head. Yeah. And, um, you know, look, forget about, you know, um, affirmations and hypnosis. And the fact is whatever we're saying to ourselves on a daily basis, we're hypnotising ourselves. If we're saying... Oh, this is going to be hard. Oh, I don't think I can do this. Oh, I'll never be able to make it. I'll never earn it. Whatever, I'm not good enough. If you're, if that message is playing over and over and over again in your mind, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's exactly what. And so, my key point to your question, Randy, is stop. Just stop and listen. <laughs> to, listen to what you're saying to yourself. And all it is is just changing. You're already talking to yourself. You're talking yeah. yourself out of it. So all you, one of the, the first steps is just change that, that in, a, in, in a chat. Okay. You, you don't have to, you can start with small steps, you know, by asking questions like, well, what would it feel like if I did this? Or, you know, what would the steps be if I did this? Or what if I just earned, you know, a little bit more money or, you know, you know, it could be around relationships. It could be around anything. Yeah. And you just need to, firstly, become aware of what you're, you're talking to yourself, to yourself. Because what I find is um, quite often is that people will tell a story to their friends or the rest of the world. And I say, oh, no, 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 I'm not interested in that. I can see the problem. Um, what are you telling yourself? When you put your head on the pillow at night? Yeah. What are you telling yourself? What's, yeah. what's in a chat? And that's the chat that you need to fix. You know, and, and, and go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no and, and it's 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 not going to happen overnight. But uh, once again, we're going down another little path here. But the best time to do it is is when you do have your head on the pillow at night and you go to sleep. If you can go to sleep um, with some new messaging in your mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it helps reprogram the subconscious mind. So, you know, it, yeah, and it and it's and it's key for to help people, particularly if you have yourself or you have people that you work with, that you have a sense that that's happening to either you or to them. You know, how are you going to have that clarity uh, to know 
what that is. And like you said, some of the questions that you uh, would ask yourself or ask your uh, uh, colleague or whatever um, to help them get a sense of what that really looks like with me right now. And how's that holding me back and why? Why am yeah. I letting it, you know? And, and, and well, I suppose the next, the next, you know, tip after that is to make sure you connect or you surround yourself with people that um, uh, inspiring. They, they say, you know what, mm -hmm. you know what, Steve, I, you're more than capable of doing that. And you know what, I've had, I've had um, many people say to me years later, um, oh, you know, you're an inspiration to us or, um, uh, I've had people, uh, when I first went to uni, someone just made a passing comment, Steve, you'd be able to do that easily. And it just stopped me in my tracks. And yeah. Then, oh, maybe I could. <laughs> yeah. And, and, the next, and, the, and I never thought about it because I always, <laughs> you, know, you know, I wasn't good enough, I wasn't smart enough or whatever. But w within a week, I found a uni and I went and enrolled and I was away. You know, it can happen <laughs> Yeah, it, it can be that that simple sometimes. I mean, the question that can totally revolutionize somebody's picture in their mind. Yeah. Sometimes those questions can be so simple, you know, yeah. and and uh, getting people to kind of have a sense of that. And then and then I would say too, and you can kind of uh, expand on this or comment on it. But once they determine that, it's okay. What's going to take you to kind of step across and 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 walk through the boundary on this and and break it, move on. You know, Absolutely. kind of thing, and so those that that's probably the next question you might consider in somebody like that to have that conversation. But it's uh, interesting what you're saying for sure. Um, and of course, my own experience. You know, once I made that step, I, I stepped into a world that I hadn't been before, and I just met amazing people. You know, and I, I stood there a lot of the time with my mouth open, just going. Wow. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I never knew that it would be like this, that I, I could absorb and interact with people that were so knowledgeable and, and, and inspiring. You know, and it's interesting when I think about a couple of the generals and the, the, the high up people that I served with in the uh, military, uh, people that if I mentioned their names, everybody would know them probably that, you know, kind of thing. Uh, and one of the things that I tell people is that I didn't, I, I didn't learn. I didn't develop from anything they ever told me. I learned from what I observed in what they did and how they did it and how they interacted with their teams, how they led their teams and how they kind of built all of this up. And, it, and it's kind of like you're saying, if you got that, you know, that uh, uh, tribulation kind of, uh, you know, boundary in there, you know, that can be overcome. And I've actually had a couple of times where I've told people that they were saying that they were talking about there was this struggle. And I said, I struggled with that years ago. And they looked at me like, what? And I said, let me tell you something. If I overcome, the, if I overcame it, you can. You yeah. Know, kind of thing. So it's, it's uh, kind of a, a big part of that to some extent. And, and, and to, to that point again, you know, the, the other thing too sometimes is, you know, when, you, when you're in a bit of a half, you just yeah. work on taking the attention off yourself and, yeah. and, um, and becoming aware of, of the people around you and acknowledging the people around you. You know, it's amazing how you can connect with people just by going, you know what, well, well done today. You know, great job. Um, you, you obviously really got to meet a lot. Lots of people say it, and you know, it's, it, it doesn't connect. But when you look at someone in their eyes and say, you know what, just you, you're just outstanding. It's incredible what you achieve. Wow, that's when things start. Really, you know, you really start attracting to you um, uh, the energy that you need to to um, start moving forward. And, you know, it's interesting because you kind of implied this uh, for sure, correctly so, in my judgment. It's not because you told them what to do. It's yeah. because you connected with them in such a way that they began to see the image and the picture and the understanding 
that they didn't have before. And that's, that's very key when you're talking about you know, connecting with your teammates and leading the team and, and things of that nature. Like you said, when yeah. this limit is holding you back, you know, how you, how you get them across is not just telling them what to do. No, no. I mean, we, we, we can spend hell <laughs> ever so just <laughs> That's true. That's true. Talking about that, but uh, just very quickly, just getting back to the, the uh, chair of our, one of the pre- previous chats that we had around, we, spoke about the um the subconscious mind and how we use it like yeah 95 percent of the time mm-hmm. that we're on this autopilot mode and so this is one of the key things when it comes to making uh change um uh we get all excited about it but then you know people enroll in the gym people sort of get excited about lots of things but then before they know it, it's like we've got this big rubber band wrapped around them and the yeah. other end of the rubber band is connected to your subconscious mind. And yeah. It just keeps on pulling you back to the familiar. It keeps on pulling you back to um, what you're certain about. And one of the things is you've got to be able to cut that rubber band and release yourself from, from yeah. you know, what you're certain about. Um, because you end up with this little sort of like uh, dichotomy where you're too scared to go ahead, but you don't want to go back, but you don't want to stay where you are. It's like trying to mix oil and water together, you know. It just, it, it, it'll, yeah. it, it'll never, ever happen. So now you've got this tug of war going on. This is one of the things that wears us out when we get to this point of, um being fearful and I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I hope they don't, I hope they don't want to, you know, they don't force me to do it. You end up with this tug of war and this overwhelm. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, um, your chemistry and your neurocircuitry just ends up, you know, going crazy. Yeah. And, and, you know, that is cool. And that is so uh, common and, and applicable in in our modern day environments and all that kind of stuff when you're leading teams and and things of that nature it's uh it's not just going back to road academic yeah. stuff, you know school kind of things but it's uh how you're really connecting with different people and the, the other part of it is and you kind of implied this a couple of times is that um that every, everybody you interact with everybody you connect with everybody that you work with is a little different and you know what yeah. How do you really connect with them in a way that helped them overcome that boundary and that, that limitation? Yeah. I, 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 just on that note, I, I, there's a great exercise. I haven't incorporated it into my program yet, but um, I went to this seminar once and it was a work seminar and uh, the guy leading it, um, in fact, it was sort of like you had to um, uh, break up into groups and there was like um, three or four people in the group and you had to, uh, these were all work colleagues and you had to ask them three questions like, you know, uh, where did they come from? Um, You know, what was their favorite hobby? Uh, I forget what the third one was. There's three questions. Yeah. Yeah. And just by having it and you're allowed two or three minutes to chat, to you know, ask the, the person these questions. Oh my, the insight that came out of that simple exercise is I never knew you were from another part of the world or I never knew that you grew up as a, you know, a, a homeless kid or, you know, whatever the answer is. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But in a very sh- short period of time, you got an insight into somebody um, that you'd been working with for years that you just hadn't taken the time to communicate with. Cool. There's lots of exercises that happen on that happen, happen in workshops, but that was that's been one of the the, the, the better ones. But you know that and go ahead. I'm sorry. No, off you go. I was just gonna say, and that is very key and and cool with what you're talking about. No two ways about it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, what? Um, no, I was just gonna say. For look, I always. 
I don't want to leave people with, uh, that, you know, gee, that was a great chat with, 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 with Randy. I really like leaving people with something that they can go away and go, you know what, I'm going to give that a try. And one of the, one of the things that really uh, has helped me is that if you just look at learning, like it's a, a, a wiring program and you you can just test yourself. You do something for a day um, and, you know, the brain will start making new neurocircuitry, you know, it'll start making connections. And yeah. if you start in the morning and just review it in the evening, you'll, you'll, you'll understand that, oh, I, I, I didn't know anything about that this morning. It could be, I don't know, memorising a speech or it could be, you know, memorising anything. Cool, cool. The brain works really quickly just by wiring. And if you understand that principle that, you know, I can't do it, I've never been good at writing, I've never been a good speaker, I've never been, uh, you know, good at this, um, then you can start overcoming this hurdle by understanding it's just a matter of process and time. The brain will make the connections. You yep. just gotta, you've just got to put them working cool cool well listen steve it, it, it's a great topic it's a good point and uh, i know we're about out of time so just let me just let you make any kind of summary comments you want to and then uh then we'll uh uh, uh you know say goodbye to the people watching and we'll, we'll get ready for the next one well uh, i suppose just to uh to wrap it up um just remember that you know, fear and doubt are not real. They, they, it's just a, it's just just a program that we've created in our our mind that yep. they might feel real to you, but you know you can you can overcome them. Just if you're going to try and a, a, attempt something, you want to experience stepping outside of the terror barrier where all the freedom is. Like your life changes when you step outside of the terror barrier. Just start setting yourself small goals. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to take the big bite at once. Um, make sure you've got people around you that, you know, support you. And, and one of the other things that I've learned over the years, try not to, if, if there's something you really want to achieve, just be careful who you tell it to because there'll be the naysayers. There'll be the people that will talk you out of it and they'll, they'll want to pull you back, not only where you're familiar, but where they're familiar with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... Um, and of course, the other thing is, um, I, I think this applies, you know, whenever we get in those fearful states, um, our breathing changes and um, you'll know, well, I don't know if you, you actually in your, your line of work, and uh, Randy, you'll, uh, you've probably heard about this, but the US Special Ops Training, mm -hmm. they teach the, the, the soldiers whenever they get into a panic or fearful state to breathe. And yep. if you start breathing, properly because you know when you're fearful you you, you constrict your breathing start breathing yeah and yeah your, your brain will come alive again and cool. uh, you'll you'll feel more energized to to move forward that, that's that sort of wraps up my tips cool cool well it's, it, it's a great topic and it is very applicable for leading teams in a challenging environment so uh again honored to have you on i know this is uh Executive Coach Randy Swain uh, on my show, and uh, very honored again to have Stephen Wood on it. And I know we're going to be on for another show or two here at least, and I welcome that. I'm very honored to have you on, Steve, and to be a colleague rel relative to neuroscience and just leadership and, and all of that. So uh, very honored to have you here, and we'll definitely look forward to having you on again. Thanks so much, Randy. I look forward to it. Okay, and, and wish all the people that watch it a happy day. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.